everybody. We're here with Dublin and Blarney, and they're going to be quiet. I'm going to put on myself. Right? Good boys. Quiet. Okay. So, for one of our mo March, March, March projects is this clover pillow. Um, we have a video on the nine patch runner. So, let's start with this. A little pull but I will take so how we start is we want to get a group of strips together so you you need six total so four uh, in one group and two in the other group you want to do um, like they don't have to be so if I go like this there's four Okay, and then I'm gonna have two like variegated, so this would be my dark. So um, these would be die two that I sew together and then four, but these need to be cut into one and a half inch strips. Okay, um, a width will do, so one strip out of a width of fabric of 44, but if you're using strips from a fat quarter, like they're shorter, then I suggest you have three of each. So I just went into my one of my stashes. I have these buckets full of uh, like colors, so those are all my greens. And then I just pulled some out, and I'm gonna just trim them down to one and a half. Okay, so I do like to just get this across. So this is really great for scraps. Okay. Down there. So if you have a mini stripology or even a stripology, but this mini stripology is really nice for it. So I'm just gonna cut a one and a half inch strip. So there's my zero mark. And then one and a half right here at the star. So I do that with all my little strips. A lot of my strips in my buckets are two and a half. I don't have anything shorter or not as like, not as wide. Um, the narrowest I have is one and a half. So now if you're just using a regular ruler, you would just take your regular ruler and you wanna straighten out one side. And then one and a half. So I line that up at the bottom and then along here and one and a half. Okay. So I want to do that with all my strips. I'm just going to put these back out of the way. So you want to do that with all these strips and then you're going to sew them together. So for my sample, let's get rid of these. There's my darks so I would have because they're short I'd have three of these and same with this I'd have three of these so that's what it looks like so that's my dark is my lightest I don't see why you couldn't do it all greens and just different uh, same value like maybe all dark or all light but different patterns so there's a contrast so they could all be like this shade but as long as there's a contrast like dots or stripes you're okay so for this project, you need a 60 degree triangle. So that's what this looks like. Mine is 12 and a half, but an eight and a half one will do. I also have the mini uh, 60 degree diamond that I will use, but there's a large one and this, the large one will do too. So um, this won't do for all of it, but it's helpful. So if you have the large diamond, that's all you need. Or if you have one of these, that's all you need. But I'll show you how I'm going to use both. Okay, so for the first cut, we just want to flip this because we want the lightest to be the smallest part of the cut. And I'm going to take this up here. And you see I'm going to trim a little bit off that. And that's probably because... Let's, let's see how this measures. One and a quarter, 
one and a quarter. So it's just off a little bit here. I can see it's off by an eighth. So that's okay, but that's why that's a little larger. So I'm gonna find my four and a half inch there. And I'm gonna cut that. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring my cutter like that. I'm going to trim that and then like that and I am going to trim this right here. I'll show you the nice part about that. So I forgot to trim this little one. Okay. Now a lot of times you take your and you flip it like this and we don't want to do that with this one because we want all the light then this would be in the center so we want to keep going like this so I'm gonna run that over here and I had two pieces here but I'm still okay because they were on the small now you there's no reason why you can't use that but I didn't nick into that so just be aware if you wanted to use that for something else you could make this into a smaller triangle and use those for something. Or if you're really careful, so I'm just gonna show you the next cut with this. So same idea with the 60 inch, you bring it to the four and remember there's quarter and then a half. So make sure you're getting the half inch line. So it's same idea here and here. Okay. And then one more. Now, if I'm careful when I'm doing this, I will get this out of here just. And I don't trim off that part. I could actually, oops. Oh, I, have to do this. I could actually use these triangles, these ones, for another one. Okay, and they won't be light to dark. They'll just look a little different. So I'm gonna need five of these. Okay, I'm just gonna put those over there, that's garbage. And then I'm gonna need five of these, and these are the trapezoids. So, now I'm warm, so I will take off my sweater. Okay, I'm back. So for the trapezoid, you wanna do uh, four and a half too. So you want this down here, and the dark one is at the top, okay? So four and a half line two. And I'm actually gonna turn that. And four and a half there. And I'm gonna trim that. Okay. And I need five of those. And again, I don't wanna switch this around because that's not gonna work. We need this at the top. So I'm gonna go along here again and do the same thing. And I'm gonna do five of those. Oops, sorry, everybody. Okay. Okay, these little triangles, I'm just gonna show you something later. So I'm setting them after that. Okay. And then if you're doing a triangle one, you use this again and again make sure you don't use that white line it's always for me i always gravitate towards make sure you're reading the marks and it's four and a half so same idea but using a 60 degree triangle and not the okay so the difference with not using the diamond but you could always take the diamond again and just trim that up had one but this is a nice benefit of that is getting that little piece off and I'll when I piece these together you'll see why it's nice okay so I would have five of these okay so that's what you do with your strips and here's your five one two three four 
five. Now, this is a uh, guy. This would be like this, but I'm using a scrap, so it's not. So the little, the lightest is on the small part. And then for this part, we have like those. So this is actually gonna end up like this and then triangles here. So I'm just gonna jump over. I'll set these aside for now and I'm gonna jump over to cutting your background. Now for your background, you're gonna need for the pillow about a third, 0.33 of a meter. And that allows me to cut two, two and a half inch strips and then one six and a half. Okay, so let's go to the two and a half. I'm gonna keep one aside for later, but out of these, I wanna just go along and cut two and a half inch triangles, okay? So I'm gonna go like this. Good thing Mike's taller than me, he's right above me. And then for this, I can just swap this around. Right? My big head's gonna be in the way. Okay. So just go along till you have 10. And again, if you're using a 60 degree triangle, it's the same idea, okay? So on the two and a half inch line, and we just keep going till we have 10. Okay, so I do that till I have 10. So I actually have eight right now. I might as well just go do this right now. And then we're just gonna put on. I'm gonna press this nice and straight, flat. Okay. So there's my 10. One of the things, because I have this mini triangle or diamond, what I like to do is I actually like to take this and cut off these little corners. So. That. two and a half and I'll show you why okay so there's my ten triangles for my five other triangles and then from them from the rest of this I want a trapezoid and it's actually a six and a half so that's why this one won't work it only goes out to four and a half so it's helpful, but you can't do the whole project with just the mini. So what you want to do is you want to, actually, sorry, I'll bring this up like this because it's, you want to make two trapezoids and what they are, we want to go down to the six and a half inch, right? And then I'm going to cut that so that, So that's uh, right there. Sorry, I don't want to get in the way of the camera, yet I want to do this right. Okay, so it's not going to be perfect, but I only need two of those. So you'll have a little bit left over from that strip. We'll put it with the rest, but that's all I need for that. Now, I need, I cut this six and a half because I need one six and a half inch triangle. So I'm just gonna cut the six and a half inch triangle. Again, make sure you're getting the right line there. Okay. So I'm gonna set that aside, I'll need that later. And then for the rest, you actually need um, two rectangles that are five and a half by eight and a half. Now, this is, um, there is a right and a wrong. And so because there is, it's very important that we put these right, um, wrong sides together, okay? So we're gonna do wrong sides together. I only need one. So let me just press that. I don't need the whole thing. Okay, so 
that I can use still and then I'm gonna use eight and a half I can also use my um, small ruler for this so I can use actually eight and a half like this too so I'm gonna do eight and a half move that down okay so eight and a half This is kind of off a little bit. So. You know what? That doesn't look quite straight to me, so I'm going to cut it straighter. I'm trying to cut at weird angles as I don't usually work with. Okay, so that's much better. So it doesn't take a, it's worth cutting out a little bit to get it straight. So there's eight and a half, okay. And then I'm gonna trim it to five and a half. Okay. Now, these are wrong sides together and that's really important. And I'm actually gonna cut another one just to show you you don't do it that way I'm just gonna cut this eight and a half so you only need two rectangles eight and a half by five and a half I'm gonna cut four so you can see what happens if you don't have wrong sides together okay so we have these aside so what we want to do is we have wrong sides together here and you just want to cut this in half this way and I actually like if you're using this ruler I actually line it up with the 30 degree and then bring it down so there's about a quarter inch there and a quarter inch there so you're about like that so you can bring it up a bit okay so I'm gonna cut it like this wrong sides together and now I end up with a piece like this for the bottom, a piece like this for one side, and a piece like this for one side, and a piece like that. And then the clover goes in the middle. So can you see how these are all the right sides together? But if I did this and I had it right sides together, I should iron this. Okay. So, if I do this, now I have, um, so hard to tell. Yep. I have right sides up. Okay. So, both, both sides are right up. I don't have wrong sides together. And I'm just going to do this again. I hope I have a print that you can see clearly enough. Okay. Now, when I pull these apart. Okay, so um, that's right side. That's right side. That's right side. That's right side. I have this one. And I have this one. But these don't work. There's, doesn't matter how you do it, they won't work. So they just give you the wrong runs. So that's why it's important to have the wrong side of the fabric together. And where these pieces go is one is right here after the clover. One is right here after we're done. <laughs> I can't see and then one is right here and one is right here and then your trapezoids that we cut the two one goes right here and one goes right here 
so we sew these on first and then we sew the corners on okay so we sew one corner one corner press and then sew these on okay so that's why it's important to do the rectangles okay so we've cut all our cream for the outside and then the last remaining strip is two and a half we just sew two and a half inch strip on either side because it's actually a rectangle and that makes it a square okay now I'll show you the piecing here Okay, just about done folks okay so then we, we then we take this little piece here and we take the triangles you can if you can see closely there that is the non bias they're, they're all the same equal size but you can see the grain and this is the non stretch and these are really stretchy so I like to put this here because these sides will be sewn first and you can see when I do this this is how I'm gonna sew it together and when I flip this over like that because I cut out the notches they're really lined up and if I had cut this notch out so I'm just gonna sew from here to here and then from here here to there and there it is sewn so that's without the notch so I go if I don't cut the notch I'm gonna bring my quarter inch and it's gonna hit right in the middle of that join and if not if I cut the notches they end up there and then I'll just press this okay and then that let me press it you can press to the dark Okay. Do, 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 do. So now we have this and we're going to sew them together to make five of these triangles. So these are the what they'll look like together sewn. And actually because I have these notches out when I flip them over really nice there too. So I would just make sure I'm going to pull that over then there and pull that over and just sew from there to there. Okay. Quarter inch there. And then that's going to leave a nice quarter inch there so I don't lose that point. I create a point. And I'll show you. So we are going to sew them together like this. And you want to match these up. So whether you like to pin or you use the precision piecing glue, or if you're just really good, you wanna sew three of these together and that creates half of the pillow, okay? So that's one half. And then the other half, the bottom half, is actually gonna be two of these, right? Because we only have five, and the other triangle. But before you do the other triangle, what you wanna do is you wanna cut a stem. So I just take a scrap piece of green and I want to make sure it's long enough. Okay, I can get the stem out of there. I had already cut one, but I lost it. So we're just going to cut another one. So I can just cut it. Like that. And then I'm going to cut it like this. So, you know, so it's about a half inch wide. And then I'm going to applique that on there before I sew it. Actually, it's going to go on here because I want that straight degree on that one. So I'm going to applique on that. I'm not going to show you how I applique it. I actually used a very short, narrow uh, zigzag, not a satin stitch. And you want to make sure that you use a stabilizer underneath it so it lays flat. But we do have a YouTube um, on applique so you can look for that okay so once that's done we're gonna sew those three together and then that creates this bottom so that bottom is these three one two three and then the other half is one two three so once they're together then we can sew the two halves together to create the pillow and then we go back and we sew, remember the trapezoid, trapezoid, 
and then the four corners and then the two and a half inch strip to make it okay and then I just did the pillow and we have a YouTube on doing this type too but on uh, this pattern is actually by Krista Moser and it's Krista is K R I S T A M O S E R dot com. So she shows you how to do this pillow. It's from her um, blog and she shows you how to do a zipper insert too. So my, my lines, I just did, uh, I used my walking foot edge and I just went back and forth with straight up lines. Now, remember these little pieces? She actually does a little pillow with this too. So if you have these little triangles left over, you can sew them together with maybe another, cut some left over, or if you have some of these left over, and you can start sewing them together in a row. And then you can either make the pillow like she did, she had a lot, or you can sew them together and start making a little mug rug. So with your little scraps, if that's something you wanna do, it's not something I'll probably do, to be honest, but <laughs> if you want. Okay. Happy St. Patty's Day and thank you very much. Bye.